Hi guys and welcome to We Drum Tips. This video is about building a dual trigger mesh pad. We start out with this 14 inch pearl rhythm traveler pad. It is a second hand pad and perfect for modifications. The interesting part of the pad is however the trigger system. Therefore we need this trigger cone and a decoupler from our drums to desolate the head trigger from the pad. Head and rim piezo also from our drums. An adhesive dot to apply the piezo. A stereo jack plug. Six M4 screws including big washers and lock washers. And these metal angles. Furthermore we need a 14 inch Roland mesh head. And a rim silencer. First we will remove head and rim. We take off the lock screw and the second one at the opposite to attach two of the angles. We use M4 screws with big washers. The original screws are too short. It is really important to measure the exact distance between the holes. The main component of the pad will be an aluminium disc. The disc is from a German online store, specialized in metal sheet cutting. It should be 10 mm smaller than the drum inner diameter but still big enough to fit the holes of the angles. The purpose of a smaller disc is that we are still flexible with the way we attach the angle. Our pad has six locks. That means we need six holes with an offset of 60 degree. The disc is protected with a protection layer, which is rideable. This is the spot for the jack block. It shouldn't be too far away from the piezo, due to their cable length. The 40 by 40 mm square is required for the decoupler foam. The holes of the angles have a diameter of 5 mm. As a result we will drill 5 mm holes into the aluminium disc. Aluminium is not only light, it is also really easy to work with. We attach the hoover pipe near the drill bit to get rid of the aluminium dust immediately. Get rid of the edges with a countersink. Now we can try out if the holes fit with the applied angles. Time to cut out the square in the middle of the pad. The protection layer gets removed only at this spot. We want to use spray adhesive to paste the decoupler onto the disc. This way we only spray the required spot. Spray adhesive is a perfect way for applying foam. The decoupler has to be exactly in the middle of the disc to get the best trigger result. We get rid of the layer after a few hours of waiting time. Now we'll need the piezos. The bigger one is for the rim and gets pasted via double layered adhesive tape near the center of the disc. We decided to not use an adhesive dot here to have a more sensitive rim trigger. The decoupler has a little stainless steel disc. It is the perfect surface for attaching the piezo. The smaller head trigger gets attached with an adhesive dot specially made for this purpose. It has to be exactly in the middle of the steel disc. Time to paste the smaller head piezo. We screw on the jack plug which points down. The cables will be bunched with the heat shrinking tube before the soldering process begins. They get soldered to the jack. It is really important to connect them in the right way. You can download the wiring diagram in the video description. Shrink the heat shrinking tube with a hot air gun or lighter. We are still flexible with the way we attach the angle. We can mount it in four different variations. There are still some other steps required before we can attach the trigger cone. We have to mount the angles first. They should be mounted in a way that the cone has the correct height and stays movable either up or down. 
The height of the cone, piezo and decoupler is 63 mm. This means that this has to be around 62 mm lower than the bearing edge of the drum. In this case we need a gap between the angle and aluminium disc. We take a longer M5 screw including washers and extra nut. We mount it this way to lift the angle up. As you can see there is still enough room for the lower screw and the fine tuning of the trigger cone. The upper lock screws and the ones from the holder have to be removed. Now we can finally install the trigger system. It is really tight which means we worked accurately. The M4 screws need lock washer and big washer. We screw them but won't tighten them yet. The holder screws need to be applied now. Now we need a trigger cone. We cut a little gap into it to give the cable of the piezo some space. The top of the cone has to be 1.5 mm higher than the bearing edge of the drum. The sticky tape is the marker. The height can be adjusted by moving the angles up or down through the slotted holes. All angles should be adjusted at the exact same height. The easiest way is measuring the distance from the angle top to the bearing edge. We tighten all screws and apply mesh head and rib. The final step is attaching the rim noise eliminator. And that's it! The result is a lightweight 14 inch mesh pad with a solid trigger system. We mount it to a snare stand. The jack plug is perfect for a smooth connection process. Settings for the pad are the standard settings for the PD125 pad. Thanks for watching. Leave a like and subscribe. See you next time.